Jeffrey Epstein, the New York multimillionaire hedge fund manager, has traveled in some of the world's most elite political circles. From President Bill Clinton, who flew on Epstein's plane on several occasions, according to flight records reviewed by NBC News, to Prince Andrew, Epstein has cultivated ties with some of the world's most powerful people. President Trump told New York Magazine in 2002 that he had known Epstein for 15 years and called him a terrific guy, adding, he's a lot of fun to be with. It's even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. No doubt about it, Jeffrey enjoys his social life. Today, Epstein pleaded not guilty to sex, sex trafficking of minors and conspiracy. He will remain in jail until his bail hearing on Thursday. In 2007, Epstein pleaded guilty to procuring a minor for prostitution and felony solicitation of prostitution. But as the Miami Herald reported, he received an extraordinary plea agreement that would conceal the full extent of Epstein's crimes and the number of people involved. The deal is called a non-prosecution agreement, an NPA. It was agreed to by former Miami U.S. attorney, this man, Alex Acosta, who now serves as President Trump's labor secretary. According to the Herald, Acosta allowed Epstein's lawyers unusual freedoms in dictating the terms of the non-prosecution agreement. The White House had no comment today, but in February, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said the White House was looking into Acosta's role in that plea deal. Epstein ended up serving 13 months with work release privileges. For more on this, I'm joined by Tom Winter, NBC News correspondent who covered today's hearing, and Cynthia Oxney, former federal prosecutor. Welcome to both of you. Tom, bring us up to speed uh, on what has happened. It's, it's an amazing story about what happened in 2007 in the non-prosecution agreement, but what has happened now? Okay, so what has happened now is that federal prosecutors here in New York and the New York FBI have brought forward this case, um, and they have looked at all the conduct between 2002 and 2005 that they've been able to find so far and be able to say, look, here's how this scheme worked. Basically, this guy uh, would arrange massages and then would allegedly have increasingly sexual contacts or increasingly sexual sessions with these underage girls. And then in some cases, those victims, according to the indictment today, would then turn around and recruit more girls to be his next underage victims, according to the allegations. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, Jeffrey Epstein has pleaded not guilty to this. So that's essentially what he set up. And that's essentially that's how the traffic in part. That's he was, the traffic he was getting people. Others were setting these up for him as well. Exactly. And there are other people who are named his associates or they're not, they're not three, named, but they're referred to three employees that are yeah. referred to and boy, you wouldn't want to be them tonight. Yeah. We're working on those possible names to see if that's something that we can report. But there are three people that worked with him. There were other people that worked for him that did testify to local police back in 2005 when they initially opened their investigation into, into him. So you have these people here that are that are talking about it, uh, that said the things that Epstein uh, would do. Uh, one person who worked for him said that he would get up to three massages a day. So you can imagine the amount of victims that it would have taken to essentially satisfy that mm -hmm. requirement for him. Mm -hmm. uh, another person who worked for him stated that uh, uh, that at one point in time he was ordered to send a dozen roses to a local high school in Florida. And so one of the things that I think uh, bears repeating and bears mentioning is that these were girls that were going there thinking that for $300, and, and they were coming from limited means, a lot of these girls, mm -hmm. limited means, limited uh, uh, backgrounds, uh, difficult, broken homes in some certain uh, circumstances. And they would go there saying, all you got to do is give this guy a massage for $300. And when I was reviewing the file, last night one victim in particular said you know he ordered me he's this big imposing guy he's six feet tall he's 180 pounds we know that from law enforcement records he's this imposing guy and he ordered me to take off my clothes oh. and things went progressively downhill from there so uh, you know basically today's indictment kind of wraps up all this puts it into kind of a complete case and now they're gonna move forward with it and they've not ruled out more charges they have not ruled out uh, a potential superseding indictment down the line Cynthia Oxney uh, I, I have not been able to answer this question from people who have asked it of me today. Put yourself in the position of, of uh, Alex Acosta back then, and you've got this case to prosecute, and you simply don't. There, there were uh, allegations, there were charges, there were witnesses. Um, uh, why? Why did this case not get prosecuted? Why did it end up becoming a state case in which uh, he got some remarkable lenient terms? He, he, he got 12-hour work releases from this county jail uh, on a daily basis to go do his work. His, his driver would right, pick him I up and he'd go to his office. Yeah, he had a limousine pick him up. Uh, yeah. I must tell you, I find it to be outrageous and there's no excuse for it. 
and it may be why the Public Corruption Unit is the one doing the investigating. But let's remember this, and sometimes we spend a lot of time thinking about the legal implications and the moving pieces mm -hmm. in these law cases. Let's think about these victims. But yep. be because, because this was allowed to happen, and he was allowed to get this sweetheart deal and get out of jail free, essentially, there are a lot more victims than there should be. And there are a lot of girls who should not have been sexually assaulted by this guy, and they were because our Department of Justice failed them. And I, my guess is what we're going to find is after we go through the bail hearing and he gets no bail, which I very much hope happens, some people are going to come forward, some girls who are now grown up, when they, because they'll feel safer. Yeah. They'll feel like they can come it's forward. Happening. And we need that to happen. That's happening we need already. that to happen. But remember, that's on Acosta. That's what he, that's his legacy. So more girls assaulted. So let's talk about uh, Acosta. According to Politico, a former Trump advisor who remains close to the White House said, quote, the next 72 hours are critical for Acosta. This is a settled matter for people in the White House, but it's usually the response that kills you. A current senior administration official added, we'd really have to see that he'd cut a deal that was improper, not unsavory, but improper, that for some reason he was protecting himself or he was given money. Those burdens are very high, and that deal was 13 years ago. Now, in the wake of the indictment, Secretary Acosta is facing renewed calls for his resignation. Virginia Senator Tim Kaine had this to say a short time ago. I'm glad that it looks like there's now going to be some real justice for Epstein, but I voted against Acosta for secretary. He needs to go. Um, because this is such a, the, the, the Miami Herald and others have laid bare that this deal was such an egregious and outrageous deal. He needs to go. All right, another hat tip to the Miami Herald, Cynthia, who's uh, reporting, did a lot of the work that, that people say uh, prosecutors should have done. But, but how does this not, the next 72 hours being crucial for Acosta, the outrage about this has got to be bubbling up. Yes, it ought to be bubbling up within the Department of Justice. It ought to be bubbling up. Uh, at the, anywhere Acosta touches, people ought to be talking about it and pressuring him. And, you know, does the man have no shame? Why, why doesn't he resign? And why don't the Republicans in the Senate and the House begin to also uh, call for his resignation? I, 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 what he's done here is terrible. Uh, for we were talking about how Acosta, uh, how Epstein, I'm sorry, had relations with uh, with a lot of famous people. Former President Bill Clinton's press secretary issued a statement reading in part, President Clinton knows nothing about the terrible crimes Jeffrey Epstein pleaded guilty to in Florida some years ago or those with which he's been recently charged in New York. In 2002 and 2003, President Clinton took a total of four trips on Jeffrey Epstein's airplane. Staff, supporters of the foundation and his Secret Service detail traveled on every leg of the trip. There's more to that, Tom, but the bottom line is uh, President Clinton getting out there fast to say, I didn't know about this. This is the problem because you heard the references that Donald Trump made to Jeffrey Epstein and, and, and people seem to have known for a very long time what Jeffrey Epstein was about. You know, by the time that the, uh, that the Palm Beach Police Department gets onto this and opens a formal inquiry in March of 2005, uh, when you look at those files, this is something that was, that was well known. I mean, once they started getting into this, once they started talking to people, this exploded uh, as an investigation for them. And, you know, today we're talking about activity that goes back to 2002 is in this indictment. Well, that covers that 2002 and those 2003 plane trips. So when you look at it, look, is it, is it possible that people didn't know? Sure, it's possible that people didn't know. Is it possible that that they did not also engage in the behavior for which Jeffrey Epstein is now charged. Of course, it's possible that they didn't do that. Uh, but I think when you look at this, uh, it raises some questions about what people knew and when. If people are talking about this guy having relationships with young girls, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly the women who would, were, we know from the flight records, that were on board those plane trips, uh, from the parties that Donald Trump attended to, according to some of the magazine articles that have been written about this, it was very clear that these are younger women. This is not a, uh, a seasoned a secretary, a seasoned assistant, uh -huh, uh -huh. a business associate. These are women that are in their uh, late teens, early 20s that are working for him at the time. And I think it does raise some questions as far as, you know, does this picture make sense uh -huh. when you're associating yourself with somebody like this? So um, I'm curious to see where it goes. Uh, I'm also curious to see whether or not the public corruption of this goes after the former state attorney that, that gave him that kind of sweetheart deal, Barry uh, uh, Krishner. And so I think that's something that we're going to have to look at going forward. Tom just said something, uh, Cynthia, about the public corruption. This is this is handled by uh, the S Southern District of New York Public Corruption Unit. Why? 
Well, we don't know why. Uh, it could be as simple as there were people who were um, in, in the mansion or on the plane or um, in Palm Beach who are public officials. It could be that they're investigating the, whether or not the deal itself was corrupt. Mm -hmm. And we just don't know the answer. I will say this. The plane was referred to uh, sort of colloquially as the Lolita Express. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it, that is a name it got for a reason. It's remarkable. Uh, Tom, uh, Cynthia, thank you to both of you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.